Hello and welcome again. Today we're going to go over another case review. This one's going to be an upper extremity venous Doppler unilateral. So here we have a grown person with some swelling in the arm. Now when we do these exams, our number one goal is to find out whether they have a DVT, deep vein thrombosis, or a blood clot in one of the deep veins. Other things you can see would be a superficial vein thrombosis, a thrombophlebitis, cellulitis, edema, um, extravasation of fluid in the IV. So when you scan these patients, you got to make sure if they have any uh, peripheral IVs or if they have any PIC lines. Now, PIC line is a PICC line, peripherally inserted central catheter. Right? This patient did not. They had a peripheral IV, peripheral IV line that they removed. So when I begin this exam, I begin right here in the suprasternal notch. I use either the curved probe. In bigger patients, I use the curved probe, the C the C65 or whatever, the smaller microconvex array probe, if they're skinny. If they're real skinny, I'll even use the linear. Sometimes you're gonna have a hard time getting the vessels in the chest. Not every place begins there. Some place use uh, your beginning as the jugular vein, and then you work your way down subclavian and all the way down. So I begin in this patient with the microconvex that goes up to 10 megahertz. I lower the megahertz, uh, the frequency is six in this one. So super sternal notch, angled down towards the heart. And here, sometimes it's really hard to make it out, but you're already getting a little rib shadowing, not rib shadowing, uh, subclavian, not subclavian, clavicle shadowing here. And then this is the right brachiocephalic vein. They also call it the right anonymous vein. I like brachiocephalic better because the vein literally gets a, a vein from the, from the arm and the head. So brachiocephalic. I like brachiocephalic left brachiocephalic, and then SVC, or superior vena cava, which goes into the right atrium, all right? So take that grayscale image. There's another one there. You can kind of see it there. Not very well, but once you put the color Doppler, it really does come out. So that's the color with the color Doppler. It looks very beautiful. It's like in the shape of a Y, all right? So, you know, beware. This image can be a little difficult to get in some patients, especially much larger patients, but you can try the large curve that the ones we use for abdomen and you might be able to get it. Maybe not in grayscale, but maybe with color Doppler. Also beware, I put my color Doppler small and I focus it right there in the SVC and the two brachiocephalic veins because oftentimes with the pleura right there, because right under there you have the lung, you are going to get mirror imaging artifacts of the color. So it'll look like you have one vein and then under it, you look like you have another vein. That might confuse you. If you're not experienced, you might say, oh man, is this, this patient's uh, brachiocephalic vein duplicated? It's not. It's a mirror image and artifact. So I focus my color block, my color box to be right there. All right. After that, spectro Doppler. All right. Always make sure you got your gain, your scale and everything set up nice. See, it's a little phasic. That's from respiratory variations. All right. And then onto the right brachiocephalic vein, so right BCV. Again, you can see right here with the clavicle shadow. Put the color Doppler. So here you're kind of seeing what I was saying earlier. Here's your vein. This is one part of the vein. That's the other part of the vein. All this is mirror image or image artifact. And you can try to mess with the scale and gain, but it's still going to be there. All right, so here again, you can see it again brachiocephalic vein you can see the the outer limits of the vein there and then you got this little looks like a duplicate vessel All right so take a grayscale image color doppler and then put your spectral doppler take a nice tracing make sure the gain is not too high the scale is not too high or too low all right so now the left brachiocephalic vein so if you're having trouble getting the brachiocephalic veins you can scan from here have the patient turn their head that way or that way extend their neck sometimes when they extend their neck it's a little harder because this area gets real tight and you can't really press real hard so sometimes when they move, move forward you have more give there in the super sternal notch to scan the the area so brachiocephalic vein left without color with color and also this right here this echogenic part right here that might be a little bit of thymus that'll be very prominent in pediatrics In adults you may see it you may not see it but that echogenic part right there is most likely thymus so left brachiocephalic vein without color with color all right here you got your brachiocephalic vein with color and then with spectral doppler all right and let's look real quick at an image of the brachiocephalic vein or the svc all right, go to images, and 
this is a nice right here. So here you can see the brachiocephalic vein or anatomy and then the other anatomy and then how it forms into a Y. And after you're done with the left brachiocephalic, since I'm only doing uh, it was right upper extremity, then from then on, I'm going to just focus on the right all the way down. Again, this patient did not have a pick line. So once you get to the, the jugular vein, you can do a dual screen. Sometimes in some patients, the jugular vein is collapsed just from pressure or it's just collapsed. You can have them hold their breath and that might mean make the jugular vein expand a little bit. So then you can do a dual screen with compression. So here's your carotid artery. Here's your jugular vein. And then that's it collapsed. So you see it's completely gone. And here you can see these two little white lines. That's a valve in the jugular vein. So right internal jugular vein, dual screen with compression, All right? Sagittal view right here. So if you go in here, you're going to go trachea, thyroid, carotid, jugular. So jugular and, sag and sagittal, grayscale, take an image, then with color Doppler. And then finally, it's another color Doppler image with spectral, spectral Doppler. All right, once you're done with the jugular vein, you can go down to the subclavian vein and this patient you actually see the the confluence of the jugular vein with the subclavian vein so here's your brachial cephalic vein jugular vein that's a valve leaflet right there and then this is subclavian vein right here all right so there i've wrote ig ijv subclavian vein and then you can doppler that sure all right so once you're in subclavian you don't have to compress the subclavian if the patient has a very big chest so they're very muscular you might not be able to but sometimes you can you know, you can just put push it there, try to find the, the most softest part, and then just do a dual screen and compress. So here I have a dual screen image of the subclavian artery and vein with the subclavian vein compressed. Then onto the sagittal image. Now, what I like to tell everybody is our clavicles ascend, right? They kind of go from the sternum here and they go like wavy, kind of dip down a little bit and then ascend up over here to the shoulder. And then the subclavian vein goes down. So it's like that. So if you're under the clavicle and you're scanning along the geez, scanning along the clavicle right here, your vessel is not going to be perfectly longitudinal. You have to turn your transducer to the arm. So go against the the clavicle, right? And then you'll get it nice and longitudinal like I have it here. So grayscale image, color Doppler, and then spectral Doppler. Done with subclavian. You know, you can do a proximal mid, uh, distal if you want. So once you're done with the subclavian, go to the axillary vein. So go to the armpit, and right there you'll have the the, the axillary artery and axillary vein. Dual dual screen with compression. Longitudinal. You might have to have the patient put their arm out or rotate their arm out a little bit to get to the or move it away from their body. Sometimes the patient might be like that. You won't be able to get to the armpit. So have them move their arm out laterally. So sagittal axillary vein, that's axillary vein again, a grayscale, color, and spectral Doppler. So this patient was rather skinny, so you can see the, the brachial vein, I mean the brachial artery, and more superficially, you can see the, the basilic vein there. Right? As I collapse the basilic vein here, you can see the brachial artery and one of the brachial veins there, which it looked like it was much more dilated here. This is a good vein to look at, that's usually where they put the pick lines. Every now and then they'll put a pick line in the cephalic vein. Cephalic vein is much smaller caliber than basilic vein, so they always usually go for the basilic vein. Then sagittal, grayscale, and then one with color. Then spectral Doppler. All right, so here's a cephalic vein. You see it's very superficial. Here you got muscle, and here's your adipose, adipose subcutaneous tissue. So that's a cephalic there, collapsed. Here it is collapsed. So dual screen with compression, longitudinal, you can see a little valve leaflet there with the bicep right here. So that's usually right there. Now here, when you're doing the cephalic vein, you have to press very soft because any light pressure, it might already be collapsed even before you start scanning because it's just one of those veins that is very small and in older people it's just collapsed. Or if somebody's had a lot of lines, that vein could be obliterated, they might have like little collaterals. So light pressure, uh, put more gel if you have to, and then scan in sagittal, grayscale. Here you see this vessel is pretty perpendicular to the probe. So you might want to tilt your, your uh, transducer one way or another to give it more of an angle. But it was fine. I was able to, to still get a good Doppler signal, color Doppler signal. So take an image with color Doppler and then spectral Doppler. 
All right. All right, so once I was done here, I went down to where his swelling was. He has some swelling right here in the median antecubital region. Now, the basilic vein comes through here, cephalic vein here. They meet in the antecubital fossa, become the median antecubital vein. Then they split up again. Basilic goes down this way, and cephalic goes down that way. So right here where his swelling was, I went down. And you can see the very clear vessel, and then you can start to see some gunk. That is not artifact. That's a clot. All right, so remember, this is the cephalic vein, so it's a superficial vein. All right, so I took some more pictures there. You can see the thrombus inside the vein. Put some color Doppler. You can see there's flow in the good side where there's no clot, and then where there's clot, there is no flow. All right, and then also you also want to take transverse images because sometimes, especially in these superficial veins, when you take those transverse images, it shows very clearly. So here we got a dual screen of the cephalic vein, distal cephalic vein. You very, very clearly see there's clot. The vein is not compressible. There's edema. All these little black lines are interstitial fluid. So edema is often called like a cobblestone appearance. So that's what you're seeing there, edema. Usually the fat's going to be echogenic as well. So no compression. Put the color Doppler. And you can see there's a little rim of flow there, but the majority of the vessel is covered in clot. All right. So in forearm, I went down into the forearm and there was still clot. You see right here. Again, here's muscle, subcutaneous adipose tissue. Again, dual screen. Here you can see there's some more anechoic components to this clot, but there's clot there. Um, comp no compression. Grayscale image at that area here, showing the clot within the vessel. Color Doppler, no flow. And spectral Doppler, no flow. Even if there's a clot, you still want to put color Doppler. You still want to put spectral Doppler. You don't have to worry about augmentations, obviously, because you don't want to dislodge a clot, even though a clot like this, you know, it's pretty superficial and it's not really going to kind of adhere to the vein wall. All right, so then I did a panoramic view. You don't have to do this, but I just wanted to show the extent of the clot. So kind of from where it starts to kind of where it ends, where I can see. So here you can see the panoramic of the entire vessel there. And here's the end of the the biceps muscle, and then the beginning of maybe like the flexor muscles or the pronator. So another thing you can see is that the wall of the vessel is pretty thick, right? And that kind of goes with the thrombophlebitis of the superficial vein. All right. So then I went um, more distally into the cephalic vein, and then you can see here there is no clot within the vein. It collapses very easily. So dual screen. I put no compression there, but that was a typo. I do a lot of typos. So, but there was compression. Longitudinal grayscale. Here you kind of see the beginning of, of leaflets there that are open. Color Doppler and spectra. Always, you want to take always grayscale, color Doppler, grayscale, color Doppler, and spectra. All right, so then I went back into the antecubital region to show the clot a little bit more. Every time I find pathology, I get a little a little picture crazy. I, I tend to take a lot of images. Sometimes I'll go back and review my images, and I'll be like, I've taken literally four or five pictures of this gallstone that look exactly the same. I can get rid of a couple. And that's it. So was this a case of DVT? No. This was a superficial thrombophlebitis of the distal cephalic vein. All right, so it's different from DVT. Uh, that would be a, a thrombus in the subclavian vein, in the brachiocephalic, in a, a brachial vein. But this is a superficial vein. All right, so I just want to go over this. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got a few tips and tricks. I hope I wasn't too long-winded. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you. Bye.